The topic for this quarter's documentary was chosen thanks to the participation of over 1,500 people in the poll back in September. If you wish to participate in the poll for the next upcoming documentary, then be sure to stick around until the end of the video. Now, onto our scheduled program. Every game is home to many things that we expect. A community that interacts with each other through online posts, creating either discussion forms on specific topics regarding the game, or beautifully crafted illustrations of art for people to enjoy of their favorite characters. But most prominently, every game has its fair share of content creators. People who are willing to make videos either playing, discussing, or even sharing experiences with others around the game. There are always a small handful of creators that stand out within each community, as well as many others that while not as large, still offer unique and interesting experiences when it comes to content creation. These content creators are often what many would consider to be the faces of the community, the faces people tend to bring up when talking about the game. Yet despite that, some faces, whilst still brought up in conversation, have not been around for a long time. Faces that despite contributing so much flavor and affection to the community have seemingly vanished from the platform without a trace. Faces that for one reason or another just stopped uploading without warning at all. Tonight, we shall take on the journey on not only learning who these content creators were, but why they disappeared and what ended up making them leave the platform in the first place. Eight creators will be put under the spotlight for tonight's topic. So now, without any further prolongation, let us begin. Hey everyone, Keith Bot here, with my guide on Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare's Legend of the Lawn characters. Before getting started, I'd like to thank Keith Bot was a YouTuber that provided tutorial and general class guide based content and primarily focused around the original Garden Warfare. They first started uploading in early 2014 after having the channel laying dormant for a little over two years. It would only be 9 uploads in when Keith Boy would make his first ever video dedicated to the franchise. This first video would be a funny moments video where Keith Boy would play with his friends Octave and Llama Juice. Though it would be the video that came after this that would start the trend of his class breakdown series. ...and not use Sunbeam at all. But the moment you pull that trigger, there's gonna be a 30 second recharge. Unfortunately, when you use a Sunbeam, it will render you motionless, and the giant beam of light gives away your position pretty easily. These breakdown videos were released at the perfect time, only mere days after the game initially launched in February 2014, allowing KeithBot to start growing and gain a mass following. The simple nature of these class breakdown videos is what allowed him to attract an audience. Even I myself back in the day used to watch him, and in a sense, this could be what started my interest in making guides, though this is not about myself, so we'll move away from that for now. Keith Bot would keep steadily uploading Plants vs Zombies content alongside his other videos, covering the various variants, modes, patches, and all of the updates that the game would get throughout its supported lifespan. In early 2015, he'd also make two videos dedicated to some of the game's achievements including the highly luck-based treasure chest achievement. However, 2015 would also be the year where after uploading on the 1st of May, he would suddenly vanish from the platform for the first time. This period of silence would last for just over two-thirds of a year before coming back on the 25th of February 2016. Number one, Keith Bunn, where in the world did you go? Well, short answer is I got kidnapped. I ended up moving across the country to St. John's, Newfoundland, where a lot of the locals dislike me because I can't pronounce the name of their province properly. The video would explain his absence as well as answer some general questions. Later after that video, he would start a series grinding to max rank in Garden Warfare 1 as to obtain the Unicorn Chomper using the videos as a way of sharing his progress. This series however would prove to be his last batch of uploads, as after the final episode went up on the 28th of May that same year, Keith Bot would seemingly vanish once again and has since not uploaded any other videos to his channel. Checking his other social media for any signs of updates have shown nothing. His Twitter seems to have been deleted, his Twitch abandoned around the same time as his YouTube, and the website he has linked in his channel bio doesn't seem to respond at all. This does not mean that he seems 
seemingly just disappeared without reason however, as if we head back to the update video he released in 2016. There is one key piece of information that Keith Bob mentioned in the video. Well, short answer is I got kidnapped. But in actuality, I got married. See? Ring on the finger. Uh... And this conversation was also found on his Facebook where a fan asked him if he was returning to make videos for Garden Warfare 2, in which he responded as follows, stating that he had to quit from YouTube entirely as so that he could focus on his career. He does state that whilst he will continue his absence, it would be a great opportunity for someone to pick up the torch that he made and carry on what he had started. But the biggest piece of evidence comes from his last upload in a response to a comment asking where he was in the modern day and surprisingly enough, Keithbot responded saying that he was now a computer scientist and math teacher, thus proving to us that he has achieved his career that he mentioned back in that Facebook comment. This heavily implies that that Keith Bod has ended his time as a YouTuber, likely in order to get the job he loved, and with the marriage that he mentioned in his update video way back in 2016, this could potentially mean that he may have wanted to start a family of his very own. If you ever manage to find this Keith Bot, do know that both myself and the PVZ community are all grateful for what you've done for us all those years ago, and we all hope you take good care of yourself. Zpocalypse was a YouTuber that provided content initially based around traditional gameplay for both Garden Warfare 1 and 2 before shifting their focus towards showcasing their talent in constant high kill games. They first started uploading in August of 2015, only mere days after creating the channel and straight from the get-go started uploading videos dedicated to the completion of Crazy Ops using various characters. This would be how they would start to amass their following through their talents and completing what many would consider to be the greatest challenge in the original Garden Warfare, with variants that a majority would consider to be not viable, yet the apocalypse managed to still pull through almost every time completing the daunting task with seemingly minimal effort. These types of videos are what the apocalypse would make for the coming years, up until around a year after Garden Warfare 2 released, where they would show their incredible skill in terms of multiplayer, with consistent uploads featuring high kill games, sometimes over 100, with various variants. What made these videos even more impressive, is that despite playing in PC lobbies, the apocalypse would use an Xbox 360 controller to play, which whilst in Initially a noticeable disadvantage against your typical mouse and keyboard would prove to be little issue for them. These would then end up being what they solely uploaded, effectively the main attraction for the channel, and the apocalypse would continue to upload these videos for many years, though around mid-2019, they started uploading them from the Xbox lobbies, as according to the description of their first 100 kill game on the console platform, they stated that they left PC due to the increasing number of hackers, along with being unable to find any lobbies. They would continue to upload for another two months after that statement before seemingly vanishing off the platform, never to be seen again. Unfortunately since they've vanished from the platform, there has been no information on their whereabouts. They do not have any other accounts linked in their about page, and despite checking in some of the largest PVZ Discord servers using the search engine, there seems to be nothing at all that could answer their sudden disappearance. Where they may be, could be anyone's guess. But for the time being, until new information comes out, our investigation into Zpocalypse will have to be cut short. So far, we've covered creators on the smaller end of the scale, so now, let us go on a tangent and bring in some more recognizable faces from years past. So this is really my first time actually promoting a whole character, like, class to be master, and I've actually- Clink was a YouTuber that focused around general plants vs zombies content in the form of let's plays, similar to the likes of Wolfie Plays and Exploding Apple, who she would collaborate with on a number of occasions, along with Zero. 
Clink would create her channel on the 4th of May, 2014, and would upload her first video just under two weeks later, being of some pixel fan art for Zack Scott being created in Minecraft. The first video that Clink would ever make dedicated to the Plants vs Zombies franchise would be on her 7th upload to the channel where she'd make a video dedicated to the now infamous team swap glitch. What's up guys, Clinkwin here and today I have a glitch that's on Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare for the Xbox 360. I don't know if this works for the Granted, this would not be when her main focus would shift over to the franchise that would belong to Minecraft for the coming months, with the only occasional upload for the shooters around this early period of her channel. Though around November 2015, she would begin a new series dedicated to reach the maximum rank of 313 in Garden Warfare 1. This would mark the substantial increase in the number of uploads dedicated to the PvZ shooters, and for good reason. As with the arrival of Garden Warfare 2, too. Clink would claim her max rank rewards and be a part of the small portion of the community to have direct access to the Unicorn Chomper. This would also be around the time where Clink's presence on YouTube would increase substantially, with her videos gaining more support and a fan base slowly forming. Episode 91 is well known for being the most viewed video on Clink's channel, consisting of promoting all of her pea shooters simultaneously, as well as doing a pack opening where she would obtain the legendary Iron Citron. One particular video of interest would be where Clink would discuss about the exclusivity of the Unicorn Chomper. This could mean that you can play as Unicorn Chomper. Now it was actually confirmed by Gary Kelly himself in Zero Exclusion's livestream yesterday or last night that you will be able to play as a Unicorn Chomper in the period of time that the Mystery Porter will be active with this crazy game. These constant PvZ uploads would continue for years to come. Though Clink would also do many games alongside the PvZ franchise, essentially making her channel consist of PvZ as the primary content, with all the other games being secondary content. In the later years of her channel, Clink would also collaborate with various other PvZ content creators such as Zero X Fusions and Hide and Seek at one point in time. Keep this hide and seek video in mind for we will come back to this topic later. Another creator she'd collaborate with on multiple occasions would be Exploding Apple. The two would collaborate on videos dedicated to soil survivors and capture the taco. Bob Box would also be in a video alongside Clink in one of his custom mini games. The uploads would continue all the way up until October 2019, where Clink would go just under 5 months without uploading, before finally addressing her absence in her video after the near 5 month break. Now I know I could have uploaded in the last couple months because I've had no job, but I mean job searching is pretty mentally draining if I'm going to be completely honest because I've had about 5 interviews and applied to probably about 15 jobs, 20 jobs. The uploads would continue for a few short months, where she'd take another break in September 2020, until one last upload in January of 2021. There were videos that went up until May 2021, though it seems Clink has either made them unlisted, private, or outright removed. Checking Clink's other social medias for information, we find the following. Her Instagram only consists of a single post, so no answers there. Her Twitter however is surprisingly still active to this day, and after scrolling around to find answers, I happened to come across this tweet from the 15th of May 2021. This confirms to us that Kling had experienced severe burnout from doing YouTube and had become rather unmotivated to continue due to her lack of support from her channel. The tweet would also contain a link to her Discord server which I joined to see what I can find. After hours of checking the chat, there were two convos of interest that I found. Both occurred on the 15th of May, the same day that Kling would tweet regarding her YouTube channel. The first convo is essentially an extension to what Clink mentioned on her tweet, though her Twitch is mentioned, something that isn't directly linked on her YouTube page. Yet checking the Twitch channel only reveals that nothing has been streamed in many years, though it's the second conversation that does pique interest regarding her interaction with Zero. As previously mentioned, Clink collaborated with him in a hide and seek video several years back. The conversation shown on screen right now depicts how Clink was upset by the fact that she wasn't invited to the second session that they had, which if I had to guess, was likely this session from BFN. Since out of all the other sessions that I could find, this was the only one where they had less than 4 people and a spot was vacant. 
So, from our findings, it seems that Clink ended up with a burnout from the platform due to a lack of support, which when in combination with not being invited to collaborate with other well-known creators, ended up making Clink take an extended break from the platform that has lasted over a year. As for when Clink may return, we may never know, for the outcome in this scenario seems uncertain, with no clear output. Hello everybody, this is EPN Nintendo, welcome back to another Plants vs Zombies God of War for a 2 video. Now today I'll be bringing you the last try- EPN N10 was a content creator well known for their advanced level of skill and game sense, something that wasn't all that common across most content creators back when he uploaded. Whilst he is known on Twitch, due to the lack of content available to view on his Twitch, we are solely focusing on his YouTube. EPN N10 would create their channel on the 13th of May 2014, and would upload a video on the very same day being up a showcase to the 40 combo achievement in the game Orcs Must Die. His gradual transition to PvZ related content would take place very quickly and would make his channel dedicated to the PvZ shooters. The videos he would upload at this time would be of your typical gameplay videos, one dedicated to each character whenever he'd upload. EPNN10 would be one of the few content creators within the community to make videos for the original Garden Warfare whilst the game still had support, evident by his pack opening that was recorded while the Legends of the Lawn update came out. I don't think I'm gonna unlock everything because I need to, in order for me to unlock everything, all the character packs, I need to open up 40 of them, and I'll, I'll, I'm only gonna open up 20 right now. So. EPNN10 would keep up consistently with the uploads to his channel, documenting his progress to max rank, and earning the Unicorn Chomper upon Garden Warfare 2's release in February of 2016. EPNN10's content would remain fairly consistent for a good few years up until around 2018, where he would begin mixing up the content he uploaded. Alongside his typical videos, he'd also start doing various challenges, either having no character upgrades, no abilities, you get the point. Much like any other player who had many hours dedicated to a single game, their level of skill and game sense increased over time, which naturally began to attract attention, as few content creators within the community focused purely around their skill, rather than their personality or general gameplay. EPNN10 would continue to upload like usual, even covering Battle for Neighborville as it released, and support for Garden Warfare 2 was cut. Though on January 26, 2020, after uploading that day, he would seemingly vanish without a trace. Nothing in his community tab, and the only other form of social media that was known was his Twitch. But as previously stated, almost nothing is in there of note, only containing a few streams from many years past. Granted, this would not be the last that EPNN10 would be seen, as four months later he would appear in Crook's video where he, alongside nine other content creators, were interviewed, being asked various questions regarding the current state of the franchise. Amongst the many questions that were asked, one of them was in regard to how long each of these creators would continue to make content dedicated to the PVC franchise, or if they would ever return. It can be noted that alongside Explode and Apple, EPNN10 did not have a statement in this segment at all, which may imply that he doesn't have any plans to return, though this is entirely speculation. Outside of being in this one interview, EPNN10 has not been seen anywhere, and with how little he has in his about page, there is sadly not much for us to investigate in where he may have gone. Though in searching around, it was uncovered that at some point in time, EPNN10 did have a Discord server, According to this conversation found in the Backyard Battleground Discord server, which will be shown on screen right now. Apart from this, there is no other information available that may suggest an outcome as to where EPNN10 has gone. All we can really do is wait, and hope that they eventually either return or give us a conclusion on their current whereabouts. NM Gaming was a content creator that centered around data mining upcoming content, and to an extent, looking at unused features within Battle for Neighborville. They first created their channel back on the 15th of February, 2015, though they would not upload until over two years later, where their first upload would be of them showcasing a glitch on how to play as the delivery goat. The next two uploads that followed would not be structured either, being of funny little skits made with the power of modifying the game. 
it would be his fourth upload in when he'd start his data mining series. This series would start only a month after BFN was released for early access, and as such, with it being a relatively new title, he began to develop a massive following quickly. Each video he did on the data mining series not only showed a lot of potential in BFN's content lineup, from the development evolution of the wizard to all of the various unused weapons, abilities, and other playable characters that lay dormant within BFN's files. NM Gaming also did a handful of mods on BFN, though only one was uploaded, where he played as the Blight Cap boss, likely suggesting that series was scrapped at a very early state. As the updates progressed, each upload, NM Gaming would showcase more and more of what BFN had to offer, from the Berry Brigade to the Iceberg Lettuce, to showcasing the upcoming classes of Wildflower and TV Head when they were first added to the files. It was safe to say that if you wanted information on what lay dormant within BFN's files, NM Gaming was one of the most reliable sources, simply with how much they were able to find. Even I ended up using some of his footage and knowledge in my content, since the large library of information he has was quite convenient and easily accessible. However, on the 21st of August, 2020, NM Gaming would upload as usual, showcasing the unused Super Bean class found in the files. As per usual, people in the comments got excited, seeing the boss not only in a potentially playable form, but in a near finished state as well, and why wouldn't they? The thought of not only having Iceberg Lettuce, but also a playable Super Bean alongside her just sounded like so much content for the game. However, that day would be the last day that NM Gaming would upload, as no new uploads have surfaced since then, and with nothing in the community tab, the channel came to a sudden, abrupt halt. This would end much similar in regards to Zpocalypse, in that since his disappearance, there has been no sign of him anywhere, and very little information exists regarding his whereabouts. Though if I had to speculate, and take an educated guess on where he might have gone, it might have been a similar case to Keith Bot in him exploring a potential career, though this is only an educated guess, since at the moment, no evidence from where I have searched points to at all where they could have gone. Yes. All of them. See, what's funny about All Stars is pretty much the only case where the default variant is less the best in most situations, and more the best in almost every- The PTFO guy was a content creator that specialized around gathering data and statistics across all of Garden Warfare 2's variants, abilities, and even consumables. They first created their channel on the 20th of December 2018, though they wouldn't upload anything onto it until 6 months later. Their first upload would consist entirely of absurd meme strategies, using characters in unintended ways, as well as having a jolly good time with some friends in an Xbox VC. These meme strategies and nonsensical uploads would continue for several consecutive months before he would make his first ever stats calculation series where he would tackle the soldier class and calculate each of their statistics. Each of these videos would have a link in the description where PTFO would share their data in several different categories. Whilst the methods used at the time weren't the most precise or accurate way of calculating statistics, because this was made before we had the official stats site, it is safe to say that this was the best that we had at the time. Outside of looking directly within the game's internal data, he would continue making various meme strategy videos for a little while afterwards, before eventually shifting his entire upload focus to the character stat videos. These stat videos would improve in quality over time, from correcting mistakes, to analyzing more specific scenarios, to having much more data to share on the table. It was safe to say that if you wanted numbers and statistics on any specific character, the PTFO guy was your go-to source in figuring out the numbers and statistics before the official stats site. The PTFO guy would continue to upload these character stat videos, initially at a consistent pace of one every week, though this upload cycle would quickly fade, becoming one video every month, before eventually having a two month pause, where no uploads would be seen at all. That is until the 13th of May, 2021, where they would remaster their first character stats video, along with unlisting the original. Alongside this upload, they would also post an update video, explaining where they had gone. To put it simply, school. My free time didn't exactly exist for the past two months due to finals, so... I've been sitting on a half-finished video for a while. 
That being the new soldier stats. Thankfully, school is out for me in two weeks, so it won't be causing much of a problem with my work time for a while. After this, they would upload one month later, returning to the usual stat videos. However, this would be their second to last video, as in their final video, only a single month later, disaster would strike. So yeah, my Xbox decided to die a couple weeks ago. It's been suffering for a couple months now, but it just recently decided to stop turning on entirely. It's almost 5 years old at this point, so I wasn't really surprised when it started breaking down. The problem is that it decided to break down at the one time in the 21st century where getting a new console is down to whether or not it's in stock in your area. Basically, I can't make any Garden Warfare 2 videos until I get a new one, which could be upwards of a month away. Due to this tragic turn of events, the PTFO guy was unable to make any videos at all. Due to their Xbox console ceasing to function, they would take to the Xbox subreddit in hopes of answers. Since that day however, there has been no sign of the PTFO guy at all. No one seemed to know where he is. And with nothing on the channel's community tab, it seemed like this story would be met with an abrupt end. Or at least, it would have ended, had it not been for something I noticed on his reddit profile. Some time last month, the PTFO guy made a comment on a reddit post. This would be the first piece of activity seen on his reddit profile in over a year. This may not mean anything at all, since the comment is on that of your typical shit post, but the potential that he is still around could mean that there is always the possibility of him returning to complete his character stat series, or even just uploading new videos in general. Though as of now, this is the only recent form of activity that has, so all we can really do in this current period of time, is speculate, and see if anything else happens. Our final creator that we will be looking at for tonight, likely has touched the hearts of many back when we were younger, including myself, with their funny moments, and hilarious banter amongst themselves and their friends. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> we timed that so perfectly! <laughs> Juki Zubrains was a content creator who was well known for making videos centered around various funny moments skits and general banter amongst their friends. They would first create their channel on the 3rd of March 2012, though they would not upload any videos on it for well over two and a half years until December 2014 where they would upload for the very first time. This first upload would admittedly be very simple in it just showcasing each of the taunts that the scientist has in Garden Warfare 1. They would upload various funny moments regarding the first PvZ shooter, as well as showcasing the taunts of the other playable classes, along with occasionally throwing in uploads dedicated to other games such as Dying Light, Fallout 4, and Peggle, though these videos would perform average for a channel just starting out, gaining a couple of hundreds of views and a handful of comments each. That is, until the 17th of March, 2016, when Juki Zoo Brains would upload the first of the Garden Warfare 2 Funny Moments this series. This stopped. series would kick off her channel, with the video achieving massive success and spawning many sequels, each of which would do just as much, and in some cases, gain more support than the original video. The funny moments would have a wide range of content, from featuring strange interactions, to jokes made by both herself and her friends. Whilst the editing was relatively simple, and not too elaborate or complicated, it had a special charm that was relatable in many ways. A group of friends having fun playing the games they enjoy, having friendly banter. It was like a match made in heaven in terms of content creation, for not only would Juki be able to share such fond and enjoyable memories with her friends, but then share these memories for hundreds of thousands of people to laugh and enjoy them. These funny moments would continue for several months, each adding to the pile of memories that so many people would watch and cherish. Throughout the uploads, they would also mix in other games amongst the PvZ content, such as Minecraft and Uno, though the funny moments videos would always be on top. Though on the 21st of January 2017, just under a year after starting the Funny Moments series, Juki would upload the last episode, and along with that, the last Plants vs Zombies video on the channel, as from that day forward, their content would go in a different direction. Starting with uploads honoring Vine, which both compilations honoring the now deceased platform, take top spot in terms of video performance. 
the Funny Moments series would eventually return, though it would instead now have multiple games throughout the video, as opposed to just one. It still had the same charm of a group of friends playing games together, having the time of their lives. Juki would experiment with these uploads from Discord shenanigans, where she and several friends would get together in a VC and share some laughs to having a short series on the game, that's us. Things would continue as usual until the 28th of May 2019, where Juki would upload their final video to the site before vanishing off the platform. The same format that grew her channel was the same way she left with the funny moments montage in making people laugh and smile one last time. There is actually one more video after this, though it is of an unlisted stream of them trying out battle for Neighborville. Since that day, nothing else has appeared on Juki's channel, nothing was in the community tab, and from what I checks around on their Twitter, nothing seemed to suggest any sign as to where they went, their legacy had truly started, exactly the same way that it ended, it had seemed like they had vanished without a trace. Or at least, that's what I thought, come just over two years later. The day is Christmas Eve of 2021. I had just uploaded the last video in the Things in One Sentence series before swapping it out, deciding to do another round of YouTubers for the last episode at the time. Whilst scrolling through the comments, seeing all the responses, I just so happened to find Juki herself. This was quite the pleasant surprise seeing her here, along with the many comments that praised and cherished the memories that Juki had made for them, which she also responded to as well. Where Juki herself mentioned an urge in coming back, which the commenter expressed sudden shock at this information. If you happen to see this Juki, just know that you've touched the hearts of thousands, granted us laughs, and many memories that we will all cherish for many years to come. And we would all like to thank you for putting those smiles on our faces all those years ago and for the memories that we will forever keep with us. These creators, one way or another, have a place in our hearts for the memories and influence that they have provided us. They made us laugh and smile, granted us knowledge, showcased incredible talent and skill, showed us hidden secrets, and more. Before we proceed with the voting, I would like to announce a change regarding all future documentaries, which will be taking effect from now on. To put a long story short, documentaries will no longer be on a fixed schedule, and will now only release when they are ready. This is so that as much time and effort can be put into a documentary as needed, and that to ensure that everything can be covered. If you wish to participate in the poll for the next documentary, then be sure to head over to the community tab, for a new poll has been started. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this in the future. And good night.